Just how far does this complex go? Project Log, Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore, but further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Log, Dr. Judith Petian. I watched the Gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years. Decades before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be, but no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. What they stored here. We're getting close to the good stuff, I can tell.
actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the Grav Drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I... just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars, but I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first, but I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I, I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, Lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive. This artifact from Mars. 
I hope you make better use of it than I did.
handy with those locks. Do you understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlocked the secret of interstellar travel, at the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world, when you can have all the settled systems? Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine. All the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. Join me, old friend. We can collect the final pieces together. Oh no, you don't. You're not his old friend, remember? You're from another universe. Don't try to manipulate him. Okay. I couldn't win you over on philosophy. How about pragmatism? 
I'm more powerful than the Emissary. Than any other Starborn. And you might not understand why, but I want you to succeed. You've never gotten this far before. I need to see what happens to you. Thank you. Well, can't say I didn't try. We'll settle this at the usual place. The Buried Temple. We'll be there. You're lucky I'm a man of my word. I'll see you there. Stay for a moment. You must have questions about what happens next. We won't be able to go to the Buried Temple right away. There are still other artifacts out there in the settled systems that haven't been gathered. You'll need to work with your colleagues in Constellation to find them. He and I have made a number of agreements over the years, if you can even call them years at this point. We let him go. In exchange, he'll wait at the Buried Temple. You'll be able to prepare any way you can before then. I'll meet you in orbit above the Buried Temple. We'll face what's there together. All the other artifacts need to be gathered before the final one will reveal itself. I'll be bringing mine, the Hunter will be bringing his, and you'll need to bring the rest. All of the ones Constellation can find. There's always a final artifact in a specific temple. The Hunter and I agreed that whomever you sided with, the other would wait there. Expect anything and everything. Other starborn, human mercenaries, and defenses, alien creatures under mind control, it's all fair game. Ah, I love the smell of getting back into the harness.
be back. Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to Sarah. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. Wait, say that again? Multiple universes? You can't possibly mean what I think you mean. Hate to be the responsible one, but the big bombshell of what we're actually building here might need another second to sink in. Want to go over this whole multiple universe thing for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. Explains why the Starborn want the artifact so bad. Get them all and you've got a gateway to infinity. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the hunter. You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. You know it. Now once everyone's head stops spinning from all of this, we can get back to work. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Stargon. Catch a smile out there. I will be monitoring everyone's vitals for signs of continued trauma. You doing all right, Gumdrop? We're home. Anything I can help you? You should inspect your ship for... Sure, how about it?
working hard, Captain. Do you need me for something?
Looks like organics aren't going to be a problem here. Ethan Hughes, Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the Director. We'll take the back way up. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh... What the? Easy! Easy! What the hell was that? What? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. But there's nothing here. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Come on, this way. Huh? Who's there? Oh, oh, thank God. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? What do you mean? Wait, how did you get in here? Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But he's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless the accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. Sorry. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment 
in our high energy research lab. There was an accident, an explosion. It caused a gas leak, sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're, they're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic ob- Here's a pier. We should. Wait, he's back. All right, we're on our way up. He was out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, end of the hall. You can't miss it. Wait. Director? Thank you, Ethan. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? No, we don't. Enlighten us. The multiverse? Other universes? You're right. This is well beyond anything we were prepared for. And you have some connection with them, then. Interesting. I wonder if that's why this is only affecting you. That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael. Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Gas fire. Gas fire. The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion, this artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions and somehow it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. 
We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly, his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We can't shut down the probe, but we might be able to adjust some of the other parameters. It's risky. We don't know what we're dealing with, but... <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. What have we gotten ourselves?